All right. Morris? Fiona? Need you guys to behave today. I'm shooting a fish tour video. I don't want to see any fighting, no lip locking, no none of that. Okay? And smile a little bit. Okay? It helps to smile. So here is my 10 gallon uh, planted. I guess you could call it planted. I just threw a bunch of plants in there. But I have, if you uh, if you can see through the glare, I have a self-cloning crayfish. Um, they're also called marble crayfish right there. And um, they're pretty interesting because they, um, they're all female and they just fertilize themselves and lay eggs and they're identical uh, genetically, apparently. Also, they don't behave like, uh, like normal crayfish do. Um, they're not going out to try to kill fish. So like people say like, oh, how do you care for these guys? And they just assume they're just like normal crayfish. These guys mostly eat um, plants and vegetable uh, matter, but they'll eat anything that's decaying in the tank. Um, which that's not always true, I mean, I've seen them eat my Christmas moss, and that, that really bummed me out, because it only eats the plants that I, that I like. And so, I uh, keep him in here, and he does just fine. Um, he handles a, a pretty wide range of temperatures, and um, I feed him mostly like the uh, algae wafers. Um, I've also kept him with shrimp successfully, so... That's another thing, like I don't think they will even eat your um, red cherry shrimp, which is pretty cool. But uh, in this tank I got hornwort, I got algae, which is on purpose. Oh, and then you can see, um, I don't know if it will show, but there's a red cherry shrimp right there, living just fine. Um, I also got a pothos plant, that's, for, that's all the roots you see in front of you. Right there, that's the pothos plant. And uh, it's a lot of duckweed as well. And uh, I'm thinking he's also feeding on the plants. That's what I'm hoping. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm looking to see if I can get a colony of these guys going. Here is the 10 gallon planted. I say planted in quotes because it's not really, I wouldn't consider it really a planted tank. It's just a tank that has uh, plants in it. But uh, on the driftwood, driftwood right there, I got um, Anubius. I'm not sure what kind, but uh, I glued it to the wood and now the roots have just already attached to the wood. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to make a video on uh, propagating that. And I left the tank like this dirty because I also wanted to do a, a cleaning video as well for this tank. Also got a java fern right there in the front. Um, and that's attached to lava rock. And uh, running a sponge filter. Also I got hornwort and uh, bacopa floating there. Now the bacopa, I don't know what I want to do with it yet. Because I don't really have anything to plant it in. But it works it floats just fine, it does pretty good, and it actually grows above water sometimes. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, so I'm just waiting for the tank up to plant it in. It also surprisingly does well in colder wet weather. Somehow it survives. I didn't I didn't think that was gonna happen when I threw them outside, but they just, they did just fine just floating outside. Also got endler guppies. Uh, you can see I got a male, maybe a couple females, and some fry. Probably gonna remove him from this tank. And then I got a lone sword tail. Probably needs a friend. Um, but I don't know. That was just the sword tail was just kind of an impulse buy. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to use a uh, easy green that I got from uh, Aquarium Co-op to see if I can get these plants going because uh, the Java fern in the front looks rough. So from my 10 gallon planted, just got a small whisper pump really quiet um, I really like these pumps I think they're pretty durable and then I got the light on a timer and, uh, I guess I got around maybe 
Eight hours, maybe? So this right here is my planted ranchu tank. And uh, I believe that every tank has a story. Uh, uh, see, at the time, I was, I was looking to get into planted tanks and everything, and just one day, one naturally appeared in front of my dumpster, and it held water and everything, and I already had the dirt in it. Um, I did a, I think I put in some organic uh, dirt in there, and I, I got some rocks from Lowe's or Home Depot, I can't remember. It was pretty cheap, and I could, I capped it, and uh, I put some jungle valve. I bought it from this ki this kid, and it was like, I don't know, like two dollars a stem, and it just took off. Like jungle valve and dirted tanks. It, if you just want jungle valve, that that's the only reason I'd recommend it, because it'll smother everything else that's planted. So I couldn't keep other plants. I tried, and the jungle bell just, just took it over. It grew so fast. So I got three Ranchu goldfish. Um, this one is... I think her name's going to be Nova. And that's Kenny. That's the first goldfish I ever had. Pretty. I got these two from the same uh, vendor. Uh... It was uh, someone on eBay. This is Charlie. Charlie was kind of a, an impulse buy. Um, I can hand feed Kenny and uh, Nova, but uh, Charlie's still a little shy. I don't think uh, Charlie would be willing uh, to be fed like that. He's pretty afraid of me as well. It doesn't swim up to my hand or anything. But the other two are great. Um, uh, for the floating plants, I just got hornwort, and I think it's got a little bit of duckweed going on, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, I know how to get rid of it. But the hornwort um, just grows like crazy, and it just it's a floating plant. Can't really uh, see. No one wants to eat. I'll feed them later. But you know, it's a it's a floating plant, and um, it doesn't really plant well that it doesn't really root or anything but it's pretty hardy and uh, I live in Florida so I can keep these fish outside year-round as long as the water doesn't freeze which it doesn't get that cold so filtration I use this air pump it's got four lines I think it's a death co brand uh, but I think it works pretty good um, I got four sponge filters going on here also I have uh, snails in my tank which I kind of wanted them on purpose because they'll eat excess food and they'll help out with the algae and anything that's decaying this is a ram's horn snail I also got the Malaysian trumpet snails they're uh, pointy but I, I couldn't find one today to get one out to show you guys but what I like about the Malaysian trumpet snail is they they burrow and so if there's any like pockets of any gases that are really dangerous for the fish They'll come and they'll break that up, and they'll eat anything that got that's buried and decaying, and it's just a uh, Malaysian trumpet trumpet snails are really cool. They're also uh, nocturnal. That's probably why I couldn't find one for you guys today. And they they burrow it during the day, and they come out at night. Um, and uh, both of these snails breed like crazy. So like once you get them, it's really hard to get rid of them. I also use these snails to feed my assassin snail tank. Okay, so this is my 20 gallon uh, community tank. And I got some live plants just floating in there. Uh, that's the, some of the hornwort from outside. I think there's some uh, dwarf sag floating and everything. And, uh, and uh, I got my Harley Quinn Rasbora. I really, really like those fish. Those are the ones uh, swimming in the water column with the kind of like the black triangles. Really would like to breed them one day. I think I got a couple females, some males. But uh, in the top here, you can see I got the uh, a lot of duckweed. That's what that is. And uh, I did that on purpose because I want to make a video on how to get rid of it. So it's really not that hard. Yeah, I just want to have a whole duckweed video. 
And then at the bottom here, I put in an algae wafer. And so some of the Endler guppies are going crazy over it. And the, also got red cherry shrimp. Got a whole colony. Um, and these uh, snails, those are called assassin snails. And they eat other snails. So if I put snails from my my ranch you tank outside, I put them in here, these snails, like these guys right here, they will eat them. They will stick their little tube, see, they use the tube to smell and they stick their little tube in to other snails and they suck them out. They eat them like a, like you'd eat an oyster. So that's pretty neat. Um, I don't know how, but somehow I got them breeding. I think they lay their eggs in the substrate. And uh, I don't know how this, like I honestly don't know how they have survived. I've had a colony in here for more than five years. Um, they seem to really like algae wafers. So there might be some kind of like, I don't know, some kind of meat in there. Some kind of carnivore diet ingredient. And that's just, I guess that's how they've been surviving. I, I don't think they eat red cherry shrimp. I think they can, but it's like really rare and they'd have to be desperate. I mean, they'll also eat anything that's dead as well. I'll do a whole video on assassin snails. Um, it's pretty interesting about this tank is I've had uh, also a, a dwarf puffer and they ate all the snails, but the assassin snails somehow survived. I had a dwarf puffer in here for years. Dwarf puffers are stone cold killers when it comes to snails. Like, they'll eat a couple of them and then kill the rest because that's just how they work. And somehow, these guys survived. The assassin snails were able to survive for a year. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. I've also had uh, put my African cichlid, cichlid fry in here. And they grew up and they ate all of my <laughs> red cherry shrimp when they got big enough. Um, that was the, uh, the ones I had before. They were higher graded than these um, cherries, but... You know, I bought some again because I just, I miss having the red cherry shrimp colony. They look pretty cool when you get, like, moss going. And it looks like a, a Christmas tree. And, uh, but also got a lot of uh, guppy fry. And uh, having floating plants ensures their survival uh, better than not having floating plants. I run a hang on back filter. And this came with the tank. Like, this is a 20-gallon tank setup, and it came with a light, and the filter, and the hood, and it was like, it was like 180 bucks in 2012, and that, I pretty much got ripped off, and that was on, on sale from PetSmart, so like, I could probably set one of these up, just like, just like the way I bought it, for like, less than 100, and that didn't even include the substrate. Got the black aquarium gravel. Um, I got all the. I don't really like fake plants, but I, I just have them in here just for the uh, what I had the pea puffer because they liked uh, they liked having a lot of cover. I also have a clown pleco, but he only comes out at night. Going to the side here, I I placed a freshwater clam right there next to the intake, and I don't know if it's alive, but I was a. Uh, at, the, at an aquarium store like almost two years ago and I just saw one I've never heard of one before and they say they like filter feed and clean the water pretty well they're like filters and so I bought it kind of an impulse buy and they, they need cold temperatures is what I heard so I don't have a heater on this tank so here's the uh, freshwater clam and I want to say it's alive because it feels heavy like there's something in there because when they die that you know stuff will eat it and it'll just be hollow but I think it's alive which that's pretty impressive so I'm, I like I'm curious if you could just use this as filter media you just put them on say in the hang of the back filter I wonder if they would do okay I would probably should I'd, I'd like to do that experiment um, because if they're filter feeders they're gonna filter as well as serve as a biological media filtration. So like if you use clams as a media, would it work? So I don't know, it might. But uh, generally they can move. I've seen them move a little bit. It'd be like inch by inch until they find the, the perfect spot. But I've also heard that like they'll stay in one place for like three months and then they'll move like an inch to the left or something. And 
So they, they can move. Okay, so above the 20 gallon community tank, I have a flower horn tank. So now the one on the left, her name is Morris. And the one on the right, her name is Fiona. Now, uh, Morris I raised from like a three inch fish and uh, she has a lot of personality. Now, I, I don't name my, uh, my fish. I let other people do that. Um, so that's why, you know, she has the name of Morris. Which is fine. It's fine. Uh, but this one I bought from uh, some guy on Craigslist. And uh, she's got, I think she's got pretty good genes. And I'm hoping to breed them someday. Once I find a male and uh, I can get more tanks. Eventually these two are going to have their own tanks. Because they, they fight a lot. They, they, they're always trying to get at each other. Um, but yeah, I would say like, from what I've researched, females are generally more aggressive than the males. And then I hear they kind of calm down when they get older. So Morris I've had, like I had him when he was three inches and now, um, I'd be pushing eight. Um, but he's, she's a, she has a really, really good personality. This one doesn't interact with me too much, kind of skittish, but uh, both of them can pack a mean bite. Like, uh, Morris has drawn blood before on me, but now she's very, she's really calm and she, you know, she's very uh, interactive. So I got a power head right there and that's just to circulate the water heater. Um, heater's good because they really need to have a warmer uh, tank to be happy. And I got the two sponge filters and seems to work um, also using pool filter sand which is uh, really again really really cheap at uh, Hope Depot or Lowe's so that was just like one whole bag it was like five to ten bucks I don't really remember but what I'm gonna do since it's you know it's kind of a pain to clean I'm just gonna be if I set up more tanks little by little I'm gonna be taking the sand and just using it as a substrate in the newer tanks because sand is a very good substrate because it has a large surface area and you can have a lot more bacteria grow on it than normal gravel. Now, I've been feeding them this blood red parrot um, pellets. They're floating. And I like that because Morris, she's so, I guess, high maintenance because she won't eat stuff that just falls to the bottom. So I used to have to feed her one pellet at a time, and it was really annoying, but. With this food, it floats, so it's great. Um, and yeah, see, Fiona, she's very skittish. She's not really into me. But Morris likes to play, and, you know, I don't think Morris at this point would bite me when I water change. I just love doing that. I'm really attached to this fish. <laughs> But yeah, so usually like flower horns are really a pain to water change because they're so aggressive and they'll try to bite you and stuff. Uh, so I'd recommend like if you're going to have your hands in the tank, just like put your whole hand in there. So they like, you know, they look like, oh, well now I have to attack this whole hand and they'll be a little more intimidated. But yeah, she's she's the worst about uh, water changes. She's always attacking the siphon hose and it's a, it's a pain, but uh, you know. It is what it is. It's what you get for uh, keeping flower horns, I guess. But yeah, they have great color. I'm probably going to get them each their own tank at some point. I also feed uh, once a week. If they behave during the water change, I'll feed them shrimp. Like raw shrimp that you buy at the store, frozen. I'll do a video on that as well someday. And here we have the goldfish fry tank. Well, it's more of a tote, but it's about 37 gallons when it's com excuse me when it's completely full. And I have maybe around 50 out of 300 babies. Uh, I turned off the filter so we could get a good look at them. But uh, yeah, I've already made a video about what. Um, to feed them so if you just check my channel out then you can uh, find out more about that 
So that would be, um, I'm not sure who exactly were the parents because they, you know, goldfish tend to group spawn. So that's my biggest one right there. Pretty proud of that fish. Hmm. Need to do some maintenance today, it looks like. Generally speaking, I try to water change at least every other day. And, uh, you know, every three days, I would try to squeeze the, uh, the filters in, you know, tank water. So that, you know, we can just rinse. Because, you know, I have to feed them often. And uh, a lot of stuff gets stuck to the filter and it gets, it gets pretty cruddy. But uh, at some point, I think I'm going to separate the culls to a different tank. Uh, I'll probably set up another one and uh, maybe try to sell them online or something. We'll see. Sorry for the music. Uh, someone outside's washing their car and they're playing the music, but... Man, I love me some Jeezy. Jeezy. Probably gonna listen to his album after this <clears throat> but if you like what I'm doing please subscribe uh, follow me on my social media uh, platforms it's a uh, Ricky Ranchu for Facebook and Instagram and Twitter as well and if you like what I'm doing please subscribe if you want to see a, a different video let me know in the comments below thanks guys